Star Wars is the quintessential fantasy series out there. There is absolutely no better way to explore a galaxy other than with a Wookiee in your passenger seat. And I will fight every single Star Trek fan on that. But what really made it special to six-year-old me was the lightsaber. I mean, come on, it's a light sword that can literally chop through anything and comes in my favorite color, red. I mean, Kid DJ was having a field day. And every May, I like to do a little bit to celebrate it. I mean, it's quite literally the first movie I can remember seeing. And with Star Wars month just passing on May the 4th, it's, I mean, it's a perfect time to do just a little bit of Star Wars appreciation in the form of our next category in this series of series. Basically a series where I do a couple episodes focusing on different characters or shows that you guys may like and teaching you how to do literal moves in that show. I've done, I've done Avatar, I've done Wolverine, I've done uh, Ninja Turtles, and now we're doing Star Wars. But let's play a game just like in the other episodes of this series. Your like will decide what you are, a Jedi, a Sith, or a Grey Jedi. If the last number of your like when you like this video is a one, a four, or a seven, you're a Jedi. If the number is a two, a five, or an eight, you're a Sith. And if the last number is a three, six, or nine, you're a gray Jedi. But don't worry, if you got the coveted zero as your, the last number in your like, then you get to choose. You get to be a Jedi Master or Sith Master. So let me know which one you got down in the comments below. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat and welcome to the modern ninja. In this series, we're going to break down the fighting styles that we use in the Star Wars universe, the literal forms that they use. And in further episodes, if you guys really like this series, I will literally break down each individual form or lightsaber form and teach you how to do things in each of the episodes. But for this episode, we're actually gonna go over the most uh, asked for move in all of Star Wars, and that is the Obi-Ani. So if you wanna learn how to use the Obi-Ani, stay tuned. But before we can get into the Obi-Ani, let's talk about the seven lightsaber forms of the Star Wars universe. The first is Shi Cho, one of the more common forms seen in the prequel trilogy. It's regarded as being one of the oldest and used as an entry-level lightsaber form for students. But the fact that it is an entry level does not mean it's not effective. It can actually be quite aggressive and brutal at times, involving a fast flurry of strikes that make it great for even basic Sith apprentices. The form two is Makashi, or it is most notably used by Count Dooku himself. It was first developed when lightsabers became more commonplace for both Jedi and Sith, making it great for lightsaber on lightsaber duels. Using the grace and elegance of the user to dance around their opponents, oftentimes looking like a fencer in motion. It was also great for more experimental lightsaber designs. Lightsabers with cross guards or curved handles that you would see Count Dooku and Ventress use. Form 3 is known as Surisu, made famous by none other than Obi-Wan Kenobi himself. This is the Jedi's answer to blasters becoming commonplace in the world as, or I guess in the galaxy as a whole. Its focus is building its user in unmatched defense, which is why Kenobi was able to survive and even best someone as powerful as Darth Vader multiple times. And that's also why he used that form to teach Luke Skywalker in the original trilogy. When he was uh, blocking the laser blast, that's a clear indication of Form 3. Going on to Form 4, Ataru is a wild style mastered by none other than Yoda himself. It's one of the most aggressive styles of lightsaber combat, which is kind of wild considering who Yoda is. It relies heavily on force-assisted acrobatics, being best used on one-on-one -on -one duels and great at putting down opponents 
really, really fast. I mean, the best Ataru Masters bounce around the environments while launching sweeping attacks at their targets. This can be really obviously seen when you see Yoda fight Count Dooku, how he was bouncing around, and still even not as much maybe, but still when you see Yoda fight uh, Emperor Palpatine. Form 5 is actually a twin pair, consisting of both Xi'an and Dimso, developed by practitioners on Form 3 who saw the need for a more aggressive edge in their lightsaber combat, which makes sense why Anakin used this style. It really just works out perfectly because he was taught by someone who could be considered the best Form 3 user of all time, Obi-Wan. But obviously, uh, he needs a little more aggression in his style because he was, you know, taking out the, the men, the women, and the children. Whew. Anakin has issues. And the style also includes the reverse that we see utilized by Ahsoka Tana, which makes sense because her master is a Form 4 user, Anakin. And with Ahsoka being my second favorite character in the entire series, that obviously means I love this style a lot. However, it's second only to Form 6, Nimon, which is the lightsaber form used by my main man, Darth Maul. But it's actually kind of surprising that he uses it, and here's why. Nimon, and I'm not sure pronouncing that right, but we're gonna go with it, is often seen as being a combination of all the previous styles put together. It is also the last form that is um, widespread acceptance, that has had widespread acceptance by the Jedi as a whole. This style emphasizes balance in the Force. Traditionally, Jedi would use this form to uh, triumph and beat their opponents without actually fighting them or facing them in combat, which is why seeing Darth Maul use this style the way he does is really quite wild. It kind of reminds me of how you see Zaheer in the Avatar series use airbending in a way that most airbenders would never use it. However, the final form is made famous by none other than Mace Windu. It's Vapad. This is the most controversial of all of the lightsaber forms, encouraging Jedi to embrace their emotions and use them as fuel in their assault and in their attacks. And obviously that's not really uh, well liked and well agreed upon as far as how the Jedi Order does things. And as such, that caused this style to get banned until Windu was able to use it to control his inner darkness and become one of the strongest Jedi to ever live. I mean, he was able to use this style to basically single-handedly defeat Palpatine on a one-on-one -on -one battle until Anakin showed up and ruined it. And yes, it was absolutely a one-on-one -on -one battle. We are not counting those other Jedi that got axed in the first two seconds of that scene. I mean, come on, he was by himself. It was 1v1 and my man Mace had him. Again, Anakin's uh... Anakin's got some issues. Now, like I said earlier, I really do think I can match each of these styles with a specific form or several forms of real martial arts to build them together. However, that's gonna take a lot of energy. And so if you want me to do that and in the series of videos that follows this one, make sure to share this around, blow this up, and let me know in the comments that you would like to see that. For some of them, I'm just not sure how I'm gonna make the force work, but I'm willing to try if you guys want to see it. However, let's get out and learn how to do the obi Annie spin. Now the obi Annie spin is the most requested Star Wars move that I have ever gotten in my entire content creation career. There's, like, there's literally nothing that even gets close. And so that's why I wanted to start with learning how to do the obi Annie and the true where it comes above your head, which really is the same thing, you just lift your hand, but I'll get into it. Um, if the audio is kind of weird, I'm sorry, I forgot my mic at home, and I need to film this today because I'm already behind, <laughs> but uh, we'll make it do. I used to do all my videos with this kind of quality anyway, uh, and y'all seem to enjoy them, plus the rest of the video has a good mic, so uh, I'm sorry ahead of time. If you want a lightsaber, I will leave plenty of links down below to a couple uh, places I have gotten lightsabers from. Um, I've gotten some saber boards and uh, ultimate sabers. There's, there's a bunch of them. I'll leave a couple links down below if you're interested. None of them has sponsored this video, so maybe one of them will. Uh, but currently, I'll just leave the, the links that I can find in the description. But let's start off with your lightsaber. You're going to want to hold it 
relatively higher, closer to the top of the blade. Um, I have a shorter saber, so it's really a, a one-handed saber. But if you have a longer one, you're just gonna wanna hold it closer to the top of the blade. That will make it a whole lot easier to do this move. Now, before we get into a, um, the ob Annie spin, we have to understand the figure eight that leads into the ob Annie spin. And that is simply taking the tip of your saber, drawing it down behind you and making that circle and then making the same circle down in front of you and fully like making two circles around your body in front or behind then in front behind in front this is our figure eight this is what it looks like from the side going behind going behind in front this alone can impress a lot of people but this is pretty standard uh, as you get more comfortable with it, you're not going to want to use these big arm motions. You just want to keep it in your wrist. That'll help it go smooth and fast and allow you to be, um, you know, on your way to learning the Obi Annie spin. However, when we do an Obi Annie spin, uh, we're going to be talking about our different planes that the sword or lightsaber can exist in. We have our front plane, which is in front of our chest. Um, this plane right here, so when you see it pass in front of my chest, that is the front plane, and we have our back plane, which is behind us. It's to our back, I know, it's crazy wording. Um, but when we do our OB Annie spin, we actually pass two times on the back plane and one on the front, and they kind of bleed into each other, um, as I'll explain. So, you're gonna start off going on the back plane first, tipping that, uh, dropping the tip of your uh, lightsaber, down, behind you, and around. This is the first motion, right? Down behind you and around. Nice and simple, just like that. From here, you're gonna go behind you again, except you're gonna give yourself a thumbs down and put your uh, thumb, or put your thumb, put your fist on your hip like your Peter Pan. So one more time, we have our first pass, thumbs down, hand on your hip like your Peter Pan. Once you're here, you're gonna take your elbow, you're gonna point it towards the front and unwind going down in front of you and back up. This is really what most people get wrong is that they just try and pull it back and that is not how you do it. As you see, it hits yourself, which you don't want obviously with a lightsaber. So once you have that connection, your fist on your hip, it's important that you change the plane first and then unwind your lightsaber. And this is our front pass. We just did two in the back and one in the front. So one, thumbs down, to your hip, elbow peels forward, we unwind and we're back at our start. One, two, three. And that is our OVN. Now, as we're starting to get used to this, Keeping it low by our hips is a great way to have control and you wanna make sure that you relax your shoulders through it as well because staying tense is gonna be how you hit yourself and we don't want that. We wanna stay nice and relaxed and smooth and that's how you can build up speed with this move. Now, in the movie, you see them come up and around the head just like that. And all that is, is after you peel forward, you're gonna raise your hand, do your back spin, Drop your hand as you come back to that same uh, fist to your hip and unwind. Back spin up, fist to hip and unwind. Up, down, back. And just in case that wasn't clear, I'll break it down a little bit slower. We have <clears throat> starting from our, our hip, hand to hip, elbow comes up, we unwind, we bring it up behind the back pass, thumb down, we drop it down to our hip, and we continue the circle. This is our um, high-low OB ante versus the standard OB ante that I teach most people. And then if you really wanna add in some flair, you can do the modern ninja toss. It's not really a modern ninja toss. I've just done it so many freaking times that as you unwind, you can release and catch in the opposite hand for a little bit of extra show. You're just gonna to wanna to make sure you put twist in and rotation in with your wrist. That way it doesn't leave you, it doesn't shoot away. It just twists in front of you and you can catch it palm up in the second hand. 
One more time, you can do the high-low, obiani, still with the toss, and then continuing into whatever spin you want to do next. Now, obviously, there's a lot to do uh, with lightsabers that you can do them. You can do transfers, you can do tosses and, and returns, you can do horizontal tosses like that. There's so much stuff you can do with lightsabers. Uh, and so stay tuned, make sure to, you know, obviously, stay tuned to the rest of the videos because I'm going to be covering a bunch of lightsaber moves and tricks for you guys. But let's get back inside. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I want to say happy Star Wars month for those of you that are also celebrating it. Um, sorry this video didn't come out on May 4th, but I don't post that day. I only post on Wednesdays right now. Um, so it's just, it is what it is. However, I hope uh, you have a fantastic Star Wars day and have a fantastic Star Wars month. And I will make sure to see you in the next video because my name's DJ Moore. This is the Modern Ninja and I'm out. Be the modern ninja, but left off. Just know I'm dangerous. I'm on that Bruce Lee, flow like water, state of mind Got me going farther than I ever thought I could have been Gotta grab a sheet of paper as you know I got the pin Anybody want to smoke your whole career be looking grim Out here flashing chains while your boy been in the gym Watch me spitting flames while the frogs try to